Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. I kind of wanted to do a quick video going over the Age of Overlord main set that's due to drop on the 19th of October. So it's coming around pretty quick. Uh, there's a lot of hype around this set at the moment with the current format being so diverse. I think a lot of people are asking for a little bit of power creep and the introduction to a couple of new decks that would sort of power creep a couple of existing decks out of the format. Uh, I think uh, it's really difficult to prepare for events at the moment, being how diverse the format is. I think if we look at um, sort of the top 64 of uh, YCS Dortmund over the weekend, the main, mainly represented decks are really low percentage across the top 64, and a big chunk of Top Cut being other category, with Ricca and Vanquish Soul being both in the final. Uh, both players, it was their first YCS, and they managed to navigate all the way to a final. Uh, of a major tournament so yeah really diverse really tough to prepare for tournaments at the moment so i think people are asking for uh, just a little bit of power creep uh, introduction of a couple of new decks and i think we're going to get that with the next set so if we sort of look at the details here uh, it's due to drop on the 19th of october which is about two and a half weeks uh, two three weeks away uh, we'll have uh, our sneak peek events um, announced shortly so i think uh, it'll be good to get uh, hands on some of the new cards because there is quite a few sort of new staples, extra deck uh, sort of staples to pick up along with uh, a couple of new cool sort of engines to play into existing strategies. So I think if we look at the sort of OCG uh, metagame at the moment, um, I think this normally gives us a good indication of what to expect um, our format to look post Age of Overlord. Uh, so obviously Rescue Ace is pretty powerful, um, purely tier uh, centurion which we won't get in this set but we get in the next uh, deck builder set uh, labyrinth runic fire king uh, pendulum magician dragon link branded etc so obviously the main ones being uh, rescue ace and uh, purely tier uh, i think we'll see uh, that sort of uh, translate over to our format so if we kind of look at some of the more notable cards of the format i kind of just m added them into um, a little page here in Dueling Book so we can sort of go over each one and, and explain how, what the impact is to existing strategies and to uh, the metagame and, and cards to sort of look out for, add to your buy list, uh, cards to sort of look out for are your sneak peeks and just to give you an introduction to the set if you haven't had a chance to look at these cards already. Uh, if you guys are new, sort of like this sort of content, uh, it's a little bit different to what I normally do. Uh, leave a like, comment what decks you're looking forward to and hopefully uh, we can sort of get some deck profiles and feature matches over on this channel once Age of Overlord drops and uh, yeah, sort of give you guys some more informative content and see how to sort of navigate matchups, etc. how the decks play out uh, at a local level. Uh, certainly subscribe and go and check out my team as well, Team Shift. I will leave a link to the channel in the description. Uh, as well as our sponsor, uh, we get 5% off the store on singles and products, etc. So I'll leave a link to all that down below in the description. So without further ado, we'll just get straight into it. Okay, so the first card we have here is uh, Dear Bellastar, the Dark Witch. Uh, it is a sort of new engine is going to be introduced. There's quite a few new spell cards uh, and trap cards that go with this engine, but I think I've added the more notable ones here that will see the most play. So... Uh, at the moment, this is a standalone engine. It has a couple more cards uh, if you want to play it as a pure deck. But um, essentially, we'll just explain what these cards do and what decks will benefit from having them in the format. Main card here is the Dear Bell Star. Uh, so essentially, it's a extender. You can special summon it by your hand by sending one other card uh, from your hand off field to the graves. So kind of like a quick draw uh, synchron. And then essentially, what it does when it's uh, normal specials, you can set one sinful spoil spell or trap directly from your deck. And then if this card is sent from the hand or field to the graveyard during your opponent's turn, you can send one card uh, from your hand off field to the graveyard. And then special summon this card. So uh, essentially what you're going to try and do is you have one or two lines. The Simple Spores Hunter Fiend. So it's a quick play. Uh, you can add one Dear Bell Star Monster from your deck to your or graveyard to your hand. And then during the main phase you can either banish this card from your graveyard. And then target one Simple Spores Spell or Trap that is banished or in the graveyard. And place it at the bottom of the deck and draw a card. So it allows you to recycle your resources and give you um, some value back. And it lets you search for the other monsters um, in the archetype. Uh, but the main one you're probably going to see a lot is the original Sinful Spores Snake Eyes. So essentially what this does is uh, you can send one other face-up card you control to the graveyard. Uh, special summon one level 1 fire monster from your hand or deck. 
you can banish this card from the graveyard, target one snake eye uh, or Diabella star monster in your graveyard, add one level 5 monster from your deck to your hand and then place the targeted monster at the bottom of the deck. So once per turn, however, this will see a lot of play. So what I've done here is uh, sort of highlighted all the level 1s. We have uh, Renard in here, uh, Five Flint Lady, uh, what else have we got? Uh, Decatron, uh, Jet Synchron, uh, Kurikara, Volcanic Shell falls into that category as well. So I think the main synergy we'll see uh, with this engine is around Rescue Ace. It's, it's been pretty popular at YCSs, at local levels, etc. So I think we'll see a bit more play with Hydrant. Um, Jet Synchron is quite interesting because it can enable not one card, but one card plus a discard or a, a fodder card uh, to go into a level 8 Synchro Monster. Obviously, in the OCG, they do have they do have the uh, Synchro Chaotic Dragon Ruler. Um, this is probably one of the cards you want to pick up if you're looking to play either of these uh, strategies going forward. Uh, it allows you to have more consistency with seeing your main engine and allows you to uh, combo off, do some niche lines. I've seen a few combos uh, floating around already, so if you guys want to see a combo video involving this and some other featured cards, uh, let me know. I'll, I'll do a separate video on those. Okay, moving on, we have the Horus um, archetype, which revolves around this new continuous spell card, uh, Pharaonic Sarcophagus, or I believe it's translated to the King Sarcophagus uh, in TCG. So uh, there's a lot of synergy here with uh, Tia. So if you don't know what these cards are, they're, they're essentially like Dragon Rulers. They all essentially do uh, some bonus effects on the field and they enable um, rank 8 plays. I'm not going to read every one and sort of bore you, but essentially you'll see these cards pop up in the tier deck. Um, personally, I'm not a massive fan of these cards. Uh, they, they're kind of cool, but I think they'll be more um, included in the Centurion strategy which we'll probably see a little bit later down uh, in the year. I still think it's worth picking these cards up because I think they'll have a lot of synergy down the line. So yeah, I'll leave a link to this page um, in the description so you can take the time to sort of read through each one and uh, sort of understand them on, on what they do just to get more familiar with them when Age of Overlord drops, you're not sort of stunned and, and don't know what they do. Next card that we have uh, is around the sort of Chimera deck that's seen a lot of play at the moment. It is uh, Beformat, the Phantom Beast Dark Ruler. Two Beast, Fiend and or Illusion Monsters with different types. It becomes Chimera the Fly Mystical Beast when it's on the field or in the graveyard. And if this card is Fusion Summoned, you can send one Beast, Fiend or Illusion Monster from your deck to your graveyard. And then during your opponent's turn quick effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard. Then target one of your banished Fiend, Beast, Illusion Monsters. And special summon it. It actually provides quite a lot of utility uh, for that deck in terms of follow up um, and more sort of disruption. So I, my my main issue with this, it doesn't really solve the current issue with the D barrier. So I, I think it'll um, it'll be cool to have a card like this to sort of uh, power creep the deck a little bit. But I don't think it'll solve um, some of the issues that the deck's having uh, in terms of playing through these floodgates. But um, nonetheless, I think this card is pretty powerful. Uh, enables quite a lot of. Uh, disruption and follow-up for the deck so I think it'd be really cool to have a uh, card like this going forward. So this card is actually really really crazy so if you haven't read this one uh, if it's synchro summoned you can target level 2 tuner in your graveyard special summon it uh, its effects are negated you can target any number of tuners you control the levels become 2 also you cannot special summon monsters from the uh, extra deck except for synchros so this is kind of like link climbing but for synchros um, it enables a really wacky uh, one card combo with um, the Room Heart that allows you to end on Baron, the Menadian Field Spell, and this Patter as well. I believe there's another card, but it, it essentially enables um, a wacky one card combo. Um, so I, I think Menadian will see a lot more play, especially with uh, Cash Out the format as well. I think um, this is probably one of the new decks or new support cards that will take that deck to the next level. So I have a combo uh, or one card combo video I can sort of upload after this if you guys want to see it. Uh, just drop a comment below, happy to sort of drop it down and it'll be a, a short snappy combo video of, of what this card enables. Um, so yeah, really cool. I think it'll see a lot more play now. Uh, now you can sort of explode into these one card combos. And then we have the Visa Samsara. I think this probably be included uh, in some way, shape or form within the uh, Manadium slash Visa decks. Uh, essentially what it does is it, be it becomes a Visa Star Frost whilst on the field or in the graveyard. 
uh, you can target any number of these monsters that are banished uh, on the field or in the graveyard, shuffle them into the deck, and if you do, special summon this card. So it's a really good extender. If this card you control will be used as synchro material, you can treat it as a non-tuner, which comes up quite a lot for... Um, I, I think it has a bit more synergy of this, considering your synchro locks. So I think it can allow you to, to sort of push through and, and make bigger, enable you to uh, calamity lock your opponent. So that'll be really fun, um, especially having a really oppressive combo deck like that in a format. I don't think calamity has seen that much play um, within the last format, so I think it could be um, a bit more oppressive going forward, especially with these sort of synchro strategies uh, taking over. So I, I'd be really curious to see how well this does. Um, but I think it's, it certainly enables a lot of oppressive lines with the deck. Um, Maybe it'll define the format where we play a little bit more hand traps and draw comes back into the format. But I think this card um, will certainly enable this deck to sort of take it to the next level. So uh, be prepared to uh, look out for these cards or, or look out for these combos just to make yourself aware um, going into any tournaments post Age of Overlord. Okay, so next we have Arias the Labyrinth Butler. So this one got a lot of hype when it was announced. So during the main phase, uh, during your opponent's or your main phase, you can send this card uh, from your hand or field to the graveyard. And then from your hand, you can either special summon a Labyrinth Monster or set one normal trap. Uh, that set card can be activated this turn. And then when your opponent activates um, a card or effect in response to one of your Labyrinth cards or effects, um, except its own, or uh, in response to a normal trap card or effects, while this card's in the graveyard, you can special summon it. So this card does enable quite a lot of wacky things you can do with Labyrinth now. Uh, it can uh, allow you to sort of speed up the deck a bit more, allow you to activate your welcome trap cards, uh, turn one or during your opponent's turn, as well as normal trap cards, funny enough. So I think this card is going to be really oppressive for Labyrinth. Personally, I think Labyrinth already has a decent target on its back. I think we always see back row uh, or back row uh, removal in people's side decks. So I think Labyrinth is still being respected. Um, but I think this card can sort of uh, enable some wacky uh, turn one or turn zero sort of uh, funny little trap card plays. So I think this deck will probably see a lot more play. Although I, I don't think it makes Labyrinth um, the best deck of the format. I just think it allows it to enable... Um, a bit more ex explosive plays, uh, turn zero, turn one, turn two. So I'd probably just make a note of like preparing to play Labyrinth and just understanding how this card sort of interacts uh, in general. But I, I probably think Labyrinth's being sort of respected in the side deck at the moment. So I, I don't expect it to be um, the card that takes it above and beyond. But I'd, I'd certainly make a note of it going forward. Next, we have uh, Vanquish Soul Support, so uh, Jiao Long. So uh, this is one of the new cards, but there is a new trap card as well. I didn't include it because I don't think it's that good. Um, I'm not a massive fan of this card either. However, it can be um, just another a name, and more importantly, it's another fire uh, Vanquish Soul. Um, I think the deck needs a little bit more to take it above and beyond, but I, I think Vanquish Soul is uh, seen a fair bit of play. Obviously, it comes second at the YCS at the weekend. One of the main benefits with uh, Vanquish Soul is the fact you can play Tisabu or they can only be one. It's a really, really oppressive trap card or floodgate in the format right now. Uh, I, I probably expect this deck to see a little bit more play now. Um, so if, you, if you're not aware what this card does, if you uh, reveal a card in hand to activate a Vanquish Soul's effects, you can special summon this card from your hand. Quick effects, you can reveal one of the following um, attributes and then apply the effects. So one fire, change the battle position of one monster. Two fires, add any Vanquish Soul card from your deck to your hand. So, it's not great. I think we probably have to see it a little bit more in action to understand how good this card could be. Um, it's another name. It's a fire. It can add any Vanquish Soul monster if you have two fires. Um, Fenrir is still in the format, so it's not impossible to get two fires. It's a bit more trickier um, than, say, two Darks or two Earths. But I think... Um, and the cards you can add off Vanquish Soul aren't amazing. I mean, you probably... Like, if you can play this card, you might already have access to Borga already. So I think Borga is probably one of the best cards in the deck, if not the best cards in the deck. So uh, I don't think this card will take it above and beyond, but it's, it's kind of nice to have another option in the deck, especially in the name as well. Um, so yeah, I'd probably note that um, Vanquish Soul could see a little bit more play due to this, but I don't think it'll take it above and beyond. So I've kind of left the best two cards, in my opinion, to last. Um, I think Dear Bellstar obviously probably is the best sort of engine or... or the best sort of uh, pickup cards at this point, but I think these two cards are really, really cool. 
Um, if you don't know what they are, I will go over them separately. Uh, but if you guys sort of like this content and you uh, have stuck around to the video, I really appreciate it. Uh, let, let me know what cards you're sort of hyped for. Let me know in the comments and uh, leave a like, share, all that good stuff. And check out my socials as well. Stellar Nemesis Tifon Doomsday Star. It's a bit of a mouthful, but um, this card is really funny. So I, I think Konami are doing some weird stuff at the moment with uh, summoning mechanics. It, it kind of cheats out um, <laughs> X, this sort of boss XYZ boss monster. So uh, originally it takes two level 12 monsters, but if you read it, you're like, okay, this this is kind of just cheating. But um, So if your opponent special summon two or more monsters from the extra deck uh, during a previous turn, um, you can also XYZ summon this card by using one monster you, you control with the highest attack. So uh, one purely can make this card. <laughs> but um, yeah, what it does is uh, if special summon this way, you cannot normal or special summon for the rest of the turn. While you control this XYZ summon card, neither player can activate the effects of monsters with 3k attack or more. Once per turn, you can detach on material and then return one card uh, on the field to the hand. Okay, bit of a weird card. I think it's really, really strong. I don't think this effect is all that important to sort of lock out. Um, if I just highlight it. This sort of effect to floodgate 3k or more monsters. Um, I don't think that's relevant, but I think this effect is pretty relevant here. So you could kind of use it as a last... Uh, line of uh, defense or, or offense really because it's going to be a push card going second I think they want to add in a flexible card that you can sort of slap into any deck that allows you to push through balls going second um, I don't think the floodgate effect is really that relevant uh, considering there aren't too many oppressive 3k uh, monsters in the format I think a lot of cards sort of under that sort of bracket I think we could probably see this card uh, see a lot of play I think you could probably sort of use your engine or use your hand to push through a board any sort of uh, redundant monsters on a field you can sort of um, just rank up into this guy he can bounce the cards on a field and then push for a little bit more damage and then you can set some back row or, or keep some hand traps in hand and and her, it allows sort of look more back and forth Yu-Gi-Oh. I think um, the worst thing about Yu-Gi-Oh at the moment is is watch your opponent combo off for like 10 minutes and, and you, you just can't play and you just scoop right. I think that's probably one of the worst feelings in Yu-Gi-Oh. So they kind of want to make it more um, of a back and forth by introducing a card like this. It can enable some cool stuff. Um, you can't really slap a Zeus on top of it because you can't summon afterwards. Um, so I think it could be a last line of push um, into these oppressive... Um, monster heavy boards just break them set up this guy set up your own back row and hand traps and, and sort of have a bit of a back and forth with your opponent but um no all, all for it I, I think this card could be really cool and uh i'd be interested to see how uh it interacts with a lot of the decks currently in the format and then last but not least um sp little knight i'm sure you guys have probably seen this card already uh it's part of the sort of ip mascarena archetype i don't think it really is an archetype but it's kind of uh, within the same sort of bracket um as Masquerader, I think this card is crazy good. It is the definition of power creep. Yeah, so if you haven't read this card, um, it's really, really generic. Uh, two effect monsters. So that's it. Two effect monsters. Link two. Uh, if this card is link summoned using a fusion, uh, synchro, XYZ, or link monster as a material, you can target one card on the field or in the graveyard and banish it. Also, your monsters cannot attack directly for the rest of the turn. Uh, when your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect, you can target uh, two face-up monsters on the field, including at least one monster you control, and banish them until the end phase. So notably, it can target itself, banish it, and yeah, this card is uh, pretty, pretty good. Allows you to sort of... Uh, it, it reminds me of like Verte, but in, instead of Verte enabling a, a big fusion summon, I think this card provides a lot of disruption. Uh, it could be a really card for Pearly. Uh, if you get debarred, you can sort of push through your opponent's board still, uh, set your Pearly quick plays, survive another turn, and then uh, you still have a little bit of disruption with this card, considering it is a quick effect as well to banish. So I think this is probably one of the chase cards of the set. In my opinion, it's the best card of the set uh, behind the Diabell Star. I think this card is probably, um, if you sort of look at the OCG meta game, I'd be surprised to not see it in every deck. Yeah, Rescue Ace, two copies. Uh, purely a copy. Uh, Tia, don't see it in Tia, but I probably could get plays in Tia. Uh, we have it see and play in the uh, Centurion deck. Fire King, yep, it's being played there. So yeah, really generic. Yeah, it, it enables quite a lot of play. Um, 
so yeah, so I think these are kind of the more notable cards of the format. There could be a couple few that I'm missing that I could make a part two. So I think all in all, um, off the back of this sort of mini set review, um, I think we'll see more strategies like a rescue ace get a lot more popular. I think teal will still be one of the best decks of the format, given you can um, get ways to sort of jet synchron through the Dia Belsar engine. I think Manadium will see a lot more play. Um, the Sarcophagus stuff, I'm not convinced on. Um, the Horus sarc Sarcophagus sort of engine. Uh, but it could see a lot more play down the line. So I'd probably still pick them up if you guys are at sneak peek events. And then if we sort of look through, I think Labyrinth will obviously see a lot more play through this card. Uh, and then obviously these two cards will have a big impact on the game as well. So yeah, really interesting. I don't think it's going to massively power creep. Um the format till we get to sort of like a two three deck format but it certainly enables a lot more strategies to sort of come into the format and um yeah let me know what you guys thought so uh, i'm really curious to see how people are sort of feeling about the set and if you're excited for any particular cards let me know in the comments and thank you guys for watching if you want to see some more combo videos or some more discussions uh, let me know in the comments and i'll see you guys in the next video